All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Alienware M17R4. So we're going to be using a JS1 or PH1 screwdriver, all right? And we're going to remove all the screws on the bottom. There are two on the back here, so make sure to remove those as well. All right, and if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. <clears throat> and if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Um, normally, I believe these are supposed to have metal washers that hold the screws into the metal plate. So if your screws aren't coming out like on this one, that's okay. You can see like this one, it stays in place. All right, that's how it's supposed to be. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Okay, you can see that one's also stuck in there. Um, the customer did open this up beforehand and I don't know if they lost those metal pieces or something, uh, but as you can see, several of these screws are coming out. All right, so they asked me to redo the thermal paste because it is running a bit hot. So let's go ahead and do that, okay. Right. Also, if I didn't mention, you want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. So the two at the back are different, and then um, the two in the middle front are different, and then these two, sorry, these two and these two are all different. So I think all of these are probably going to be about the same, then these two, and then the two at the back. All right, anyways, once we get all those screws out, you can see this is forming a gap here. So if you can't open it that way, you can probably use a suction cup or maybe a piece of tape but let's go ahead and try doing it that way. Get a suction cup. You can see we can pull on this and then we kind of work our way around. Get your hands in there and you kind of wiggle and pull it out that way. Here you can see these little things that kind of slide in. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. And next, we're gonna have to go ahead and disconnect the battery because we don't wanna let anything get damaged by the battery being connected. So the battery connector is right here. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, oops, let me actually get a thumbnail here of the computer first. Come on, it's hard to get like just the right amount in frame. Okay, so thumbnail there. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in and disconnect the battery. So here you can see battery connectors here. Also, you can see there's these SSD slots and they label it for you. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery. So I try and grab as close as I can if we can't grab in there. Um, this actually has like a little um, thing here that lets you push that connector out. So I'm going to actually use a small flathead screwdriver. Let's see if this fits here. Okay, this is a 1.5, but you can use a slightly smaller one as well. Basically, I'm going to use that to push in that little rectangle square part and help pull at the same time. Okay, and let's see if we can get this connector out. Wow, this connector is stuck in there tight. All right. I'm gonna be careful because you don't wanna damage the connector. I'm gonna try and pull from this side and it's not really, there we go. I'm gonna have to walk it out, slowly pushing one side, then the other side, and there you go. All right, so there's the battery connector disconnected. We're gonna now carefully open the laptop. And what you wanna do is you wanna press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power, All right? This makes it a lot safer to work on especially if you're gonna be pulling the LCD LVDS connector out. I highly recommend holding the power button for at least 15 seconds just to reduce the risk of that kind of damage. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and close this back up and let's switch back to the J1. And now we're going to, oops, I gotta zoom out again for you guys to see. Let's go ahead and continue removing screws. So we got two screws over here. All right, if you're looking for a certain part of the computer being removed, um, you'll want to keep watching. Um, if you want, you can fast forward through. Uh, you don't need to obviously watch the whole thing if you're just looking to do a certain part. Um, if you're just removing the uh, SSDs, you just need to make sure the computer is shut down and you should be okay to do that. I don't feel any RAM that's easily accessible. So yeah, anyways, remove that screw and we'll remove this screw. And I think that should give us access to pulling this back cover off. All right, so now we've got those two screws out. Let's see if we can pull this off. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna kind of push on the back here. You can see it's kind of wiggling out, but it looks like it's stuck here. 
Hmm. What is that stuck on? Okay, I'm gonna kind of wiggle, and pull a little, and it feels like this cable is getting, or it looks like that cable is getting yanked out, which shouldn't happen. But okay, we're slowly, carefully sliding this thing back, slowly sliding it off. Okay, let's go ahead and go back over to this side again, slowly wiggling and sliding that. I'm gonna hold this just in case. Wow, it's stuck on there. Is there another screw I'm missing? I don't see one. Okay. I don't know what's going on, but this should wiggle and slide off. Let's see what's going on under here. Let's peel this up. Okay, we have access to this stuff. So this cable is kind of stuck on here. We do need to peel this off. So we'll peel this off and what we'll do Okay, we can actually take this whole plastic piece off. It doesn't look like it follows any real pattern for how it sticks on anything. I think somebody moved this before because I feel like this should go over that screw and then this, this should all be visible, but for some reason it was slid over. So when you put this back, make sure this screw is showing and then you have these connectors showing here. Okay, that's how it should be. All right, next let's go ahead and remove these connectors since it seems like it's trying to yank itself out here. Okay, you can see we have this as well as the wireless antennas here. I don't know if they're all one part or if they're just held in with adhesive, but they're kind of stuck there. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and take a look here and remove more things. Okay, so we got this connector. I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. So get under here. Make sure you are grounded. You don't want static to get into these components. All right, and for this kind of connector, usually what I do is I kind of push with my fingernail. You can see sideways and it kind of wiggles. Go to the other side, do the same, and it should rock itself out just like that, okay? Next, we're gonna go to the wireless card antenna thing here. I'm gonna undo that screw, okay? Wireless card is part of the logic board, motherboard, so keep that in mind. If you need to replace it, it's gonna be a real pain. Um, you're gonna have to replace, it looks like this board might be a separate board actually, because this seems like it clicks down on top. Um, but you do need to get to the screws underneath. These are the screws coming in from underneath are going into this. All right, anyways, you got the antennas, the gray one's going to the little whitish arrow, and then there's a kind of gray filled in arrow on this side. I know you can't really see it well because of the glare. There you go, kind of. Um, we're gonna pull these antennas out, so I just go under the tail, and then just from as close to the connector as possible, pull that up. Okay, same with this. And you can see it says white and black, but there's only a gray and orange, so they're considering the orange cable black, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out here. Okay, so we're gonna now peel this adhesive up. Be careful not to bend the antenna wires too much. And then we can go ahead and kind of peel this up. And let's see if now we can remove the back cover since we got those cables disconnected. I don't know. Okay, interesting. So, hmm, what is this? Is that just tape? What is that? No? Okay, so this cable is actually attached there, so we're going to separate these two. The wireless antenna is separate from this, it looks like. There you go. So this cable is attached here, and that is just for this Tron lighting bar. Okay, so if for some reason the light isn't working, then maybe uh, this cable is damaged. So hopefully not, because I was somewhat pulling kind of hard, but yeah, hopefully it's okay, because I didn't feel it ripping up the adhesive or anything. Okay, so there's that piece. Set that aside. Wireless antennas here, it's flopping over that way. Okay, you got the LCD LVDS connector here. This looks like RAM, so sadly the RAM might be soldered in here. All right, all right, we're gonna go ahead and peel this up. It could also be like storage, but they do have SSDs, so I kind of doubt it. All right, so we're gonna try and peel up this black tape here. Be careful not to pull straight up. You don't wanna rip the solder of these out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and peel this black tape out as well. It looks like there's some clear tape as well holding this. Okay, so this is another connector here. So you wanna be very careful. Good thing I didn't just try and peel that tape all the way back. Okay, and then same thing like the other one, I'm gonna try and use my fingernail and kind of Go one side and then go on this side and kind of push that 
and we're just gonna kind of push back and forth to wiggle it and there you go see how easy it came out we're gonna carefully now we have this clear tape did they wrap this all the way around really I hope not okay so we have this clear plastic tab okay I'm just seeing things with the lighting so we gotta peel this clear plastic tab up carefully okay okay once you peel that up you have this little metal latch flip that up and then once you flip that latch up you can grab the metal latch on that and pull that back there we go so we got that I believe that's the LCD LVDS connector we're gonna move that aside we have another connector down here lots of connectors all right so this one same thing they held it down with a bunch of adhesive as well it seems I'm gonna carefully peel this up I'm gonna push with my fingernail here if I can let's see nope that one's way too strong so we're just gonna pull carefully you can see it came out slightly then we're gonna pull from that side basically pull one side a little and then the other side until it walks itself out and then we're gonna go ahead and peel this up I believe this is the charge port yeah DC in it says DC in down there carefully peel this up trying not to just bend it backwards I'm trying to keep it flat if I can um, but peel that up all right and move that somewhat out of the way okay what else do we got we got a fan connector here it has wings easier to grab just wiggle 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 okay there we go that fan connectors out you have this little connector connecting two boards together we're gonna remove that okay there's one screw there and one screw here all right we can go ahead and remove that you can see how it connects here make sure you put it back the same way okay set that aside it looks like we don't need to remove um, this little board over here which is uh, nice we only have to remove this side um, this side has the speaker connected to it which has a wire running along the bottom to the other speaker okay just over here the speakers are just held in with rubber so you can just pull them up um, you got the headphone jack uh, USB port LAN uh, Ethernet port here okay and that's all its own separate board the SSD slot is actually part of the main board here um, but there's a screw it came with a screw that's nice sometimes they don't come with the screws there we're gonna have to remove the SSD here okay one screw once you remove that screw let's see lift this up slightly and then kind of wiggle and pull and there you go if you need to remove the SSD it's somewhat stuck to the copper plate here heatsink with the thermal pad you can separate it but you'll have to carefully slowly pull it and it will eventually peel off um, but I'm gonna leave that because it's not having any issues so I don't want to peel that off and risk causing damage okay next we have the power button switch here so we're gonna flip that latch and then we can go ahead and pull this connector cable out it's gonna be a little tricky to put this cable back in so be careful because this stuff's gonna all end up on top smashing it down okay we got a lot of screws to remove so let's go ahead and get to it um, doesn't look like we need to take the battery out of its slot but the battery if you need it the model number is uh, 69kf2 all right so if you need to replace the battery 69kf2 um, there's a few screws that you do need to remove um, yeah all right since I'm not taking that out I'm not well at least for now it doesn't look like I need to take that out so we're not gonna see I don't know if this cable is part of the battery or if it's removable anyways there's little arrows here pointing to where we need to remove the screws there's one here oops sorry there's one down here so we remove the screw from there okay again I'm keeping all these screws in order there are a lot of them okay there's another screw down here by the wireless card remove that as well okay got another screw up here get that one out as well okay I think those are the three holding this down it looks like there's another slot for a smaller SSD here so this laptop can actually hold three SSDs all right there's another latch here I believe this is for the touchpad or trackpad um, there's a little tab here I guess to help peel it up so you can pull this out okay carefully pull that up all right and that is it says TP so that's for the touchpad there's another thing that says TP here so I don't know what this little latch is for because that's not being used at all 
We've got another fan connector. Could just grab the wings again, wiggle and pull. There we go. Um, then we got another screw over here. Lots of screws to keep track of. Okay. Hopefully you guys are able to keep track of all the screws you're removing as well. All right. There's a screw here um, holding the fan in, so we'll get that one as well. Okay. Lots of screws. Again, hopefully you're keeping them all in order so you can follow and put them back. All right, what else? We got some screws holding this thingy in place. So we're gonna remove those as well. I think I got customers messaging me, so I might have to stop for a bit, but there's three screws here. So let's go ahead and remove those three. Okay, we got one more over here. All right, now that we got those three out, this little plastic piece can come up. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, you can probably even put that uh, bracket with the other three screws so you can keep track of them a little bit easier. Okay, it's a lot of screws. Let's see, we got another motherboard screw over here. Okay, remove that. What else? We got a bunch of screws up here. Looks like three, so we'll get all those three together. out doesn't look like we need to remove those something is holding this down so we're gonna have to look into that but it looks like we got those there's one more fan screw here let's go ahead and remove that one okay and let's see now can we lift this you can see it's kind of lifting let me zoom out a bit more here okay so you can see this whole thing is kind of lifting. You can see this board is easily lifting and this is kind of lifting, but it still feels like something might be holding it down. It's kind of heavy feeling. Okay, there's one screw for the charge port thing there. I don't think that's gonna need to come out right now, but let's see. I'll take it out just to be safe, just in case. All right, so there we go, got that out. All right, let's see, what else do we got? Okay, let's see if we can now lift it at all. This end is like, oh, okay, see this lifts up. Okay, so I'm gonna have to carefully lift all of this. I'm gonna lift this side because it feels very thin and fragile. So we're gonna go from that side. I'm gonna grab the whole thing like this. You need somewhat Big hands, oh, don't forget this latch. There's this cable here, unlatch that and pull that out. Actually, okay, there we go. That is, what is this connector for? It doesn't say, I don't know. I might have to pull the battery out to check that. All right, let's go ahead and continue carefully wiggling and pulling this to lift it. All right, slowly, I'm gonna get my hand underneath and make sure the wireless antennas do come out and get out of the way. And there we go, this board came out relatively simply. Um, that's what it looks like underneath. Okay, um, and this is the motherboard. It's a little dusty, but not really, okay? And here you can see the screws that hold this USB port. There's also, is that a micro SD card slot or a SIM eject? Oh, micro SD card slot, okay. So if you wanted to remove the uh, this board, you would have to remove, there's actually four screws that hold it in, and then this you can pull it straight back. All right, we're not gonna mess around with that. We're gonna leave that there. You can actually see the screw coming through the back here for that small SSD, so be careful with that. Also, since we're taking the heatsink out, you do wanna make sure the fans are disconnected, but if you're just lifting the motherboard off, um, you actually don't need to undo the fan screws. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna set this down here now. Let me see right now with the battery. I'm gonna take the battery screws out. I wanna see what's underneath because this one is the touchpad. So what is, is this for the keyboard probably? There's no dedicated keyboard cable. So most likely that has like, um, the keyboard has some kind of controller going into it and then it 
has this little cable coming out. All right, so there's four, three or four screws, four screws, yep. There's four screws going along the top of the battery here. All right, and sorry, I'm not setting it down because I have the motherboard there. And right now I don't have somewhere to put that motherboard. So we're gonna just do this hovering like this, okay. Get those four screws for the battery out. Okay, then we need the three screws from the bottom here. We're gonna remove those. third one. All right, now that we got all the screws out, let's lift the battery up and take a look. Okay, comes out like this. And yeah, so here you can see keyboard is going into this little board, keyboard backlight cable going into this board, and then you have this one little cable going up to the motherboard. And this battery does look like the connector is removable. So yeah, I'm not going to remove it, but definitely looks like it's removable. So when you get a replacement battery, keep that in mind, you are gonna have to transfer this over. And since I'm not gonna rip it out, I'm not 100% sure how this battery connects into here. It looks like it's a push into place, so you likely have to pull it straight up. But usually what I do is I look at the new replacement battery and then I can figure out how it's sitting in there. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna put the battery back in. You just drop it down, put the screws, and then I'll be back to work on the motherboard. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, let me pause this. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and flip this thing over, okay? It's a little bit dusty, so we wanna kinda of dust it off a little. All right, not really bad, but might as well get rid of the little bit of dust that's there while we can, okay? All right, let's go ahead and Remove the heat sink and then reapply the thermal paste. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so this thing has several screws holding it down. Let's see, is it all numbered? All right, I see 10. There are 10 numbers here. So we got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's go ahead and remove all those screws, clean it up, and then reapply the thermal paste. All right, you don't have to undo them in the same order. Usually what I like to do is I like to undo them a little at a time, okay? Um, that way the pressure isn't all going into like one thing. Oh, I think, wait, did I count that one already? Hopefully I counted them all right, 10 I think. Okay, and one thing with the thermal paste is usually when it's been sitting a long time and got too hot and um, solidified, then we're gonna have some issues. So it looks like these screws just come out, okay? So I guess we don't have to worry. We can just take all these screws out completely. Um, again, keep them all in order because there are a lot of them and it can be different size, shape, and lengths. If you mix them up, you can cause damage. So I like to try and keep them in order. I'm gonna take them out in this square pattern. Okay, I think this is a pull tab to try and help release the thing. Um, all right. I don't know if we're gonna pull that. We'll see what we have to do. One thing that worries me with releasing the, or removing the thermal paste is if it's really dry, it can cause problems because it'll basically act like glue and trying to get that out can damage the board. So you wanna be very careful, okay? All right, there we go, we got all 10 out. Next, we're gonna carefully see if we can kinda of get under here and pry a tiny bit. You want to be careful, you can see how flexible this board is. You don't want to bend it too much and then cause damage, okay? So we're gonna carefully lift a little there, work our way around here, kind of try and pry under here, be careful with all the connectors all around, okay? All right, it's pulling away. We got this tab, so we're gonna try and pull that lightly. I don't want to pull too hard. I don't think this tab is very strong, so. Let's see, what is that holding on to? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why they put that tab there. It looks like it'll just bend this metal plate. So I'm gonna avoid doing that. I'm gonna try and pry up from here a little. And there we go. Okay, so we're gonna carefully work on this. 
and flip that over. And here you can see all the thermal pads. The main focus are the um, little thermal paste areas here and here. Okay, you can see more RAM here. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna actually set the um, motherboard aside. So it's pretty interesting. This motherboard is this square, and then everything else comes off here. So you got um, this little daughter board here attached, and then you got all these other things all attached all around. Um, anyways, let's set this off to the side a bit while we work on the heat sink. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this little plastic tool to kind of scrape off the old thermal paste, okay? And this paste, um, it's still somewhat soft, so that's good. It's not um, super solid. When it goes solid, that means the computer's been hitting like 100 degrees um, Celsius, and that's bad, all right? The customer told me that it was idling around 70, so that's pretty high. Um, we're gonna get that gunk off there, okay? And then we're gonna have to clean this up with some isopropyl alcohol afterwards. Just like this. Scrape that all off. All right. There we go. Got most of it off. Do need some paper towel to help clean that stuff off of the thing. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the CPU side. Okay, he said the GPU was overheating, so I don't know, the paste on both sides doesn't seem too bad. It might just be the cooling for this isn't too great. Alright. Okay, so we got most of that off. We're going to have to use the isopropyl alcohol to clean it up later. You can see this little pull tab had that little thing stuck to it. Interesting. Alright. So we got most of that off. We're gonna have to use the isopropyl alcohol next to clean it up, but let's set this aside for now and work on the motherboard. Okay, so here's the motherboard side. We're gonna do the same thing, kind of scraping around. You wanna be careful with the GPU because on the GPU, um, you can see it has all these little, I don't know if those are capacitors or what, but uh, it has all those little things there. So you wanna be careful, all right? When they apply this stuff from factory, there's always way too much. You can see it's all flowed out everywhere. Usually you just want it on the die. Um, this stuff is supposed to help fill in the air gaps. So that way the heat can transfer directly from the die here um, into that copper heat sink. And then the heat sink has a slight vacuum into it that allows the heat to transfer quickly all through the tube and go to the radiator ends and then the fan blows the heat away. Okay, so we're gonna try and clean this up. Again, you wanna be very careful here because all of those little things, I'm gonna have to use a toothbrush to clean up around those. And to do that, I have to kind of hold it over a trash can. That way I don't um, drop all the thermal paste everywhere on the motherboard. Usually I hold the motherboard upside down and then just brush it over a trash can to get all that paste out from between those. Um, it's not too big of a deal if you leave it, but I like to try and get it as clean as I can. Okay. Alright. Huh, what is this? They put a little barrier around here. Okay, let's go ahead and scrape this off. Oh yeah, it's a bit dried on here. Yeah, it's a bit dried on the CP on the GPU. It's not really pasty. So that could be an issue. So hopefully after we do the paste, it'll be good. Um, I don't do all those benchmark thingies and stuff, so I'll let the customer run it. He'll and then he'll let me know if there's any issues, but most likely it's going to solve the problem because we can see this paste is already kind of crunchy. Okay. All right. Again, I am going to have to flip this upside down over a trash can and brush the stuff out. So I'll be back. I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll see you guys once it's done. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. 
All right, I'm back. So some of the stuff was a little hard to get out, so I had to use this little tool to kind of just go between each one and clean it up and then finish by brushing it off. All right, next we're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and a piece of paper towel. All right, just fold that up and I'm gonna pour some isopropyl alcohol on it. Okay, and we're just gonna wipe it up to kind of get the residue off a little bit. All right. Go. Same thing over here. You don't need to get all of it like all around here, but if you want, you can try and like wipe that off. Um, whatever they use, though, kind of like leave some stuff there. It doesn't come out very well, as you can see. All right. There you go. Let's flip this paper over. Okay. can use the toothbrush to help a little bit clean up the little lint and stuff that was going on it. You can also use the air boiler thing to help clean it up. Set that aside. Okay. Alright. There we go. Alright. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with the heat sink. So we'll set this aside. Let's grab the heat sink. big all right so here we go same thing this one uh, we kind of just need to worry about the paste residue that's on there okay so that's kind of big let me zoom out a little all right so let's go ahead and just wipe this stuff off you can see how easily this stuff wipes off just using a little isopropyl alcohol all right dry it up this side as well and it's cleaned off pretty nicely all right we're gonna get another paper towel and then do it again one more time just to try and get it pretty clean okay clean that off go try it up a little bit okay so there we go can try it off better try and get all the remaining ice pop alcohol out you don't want to leave that in there and then it kind of leaks all around while you're using it okay what's next clean off the other one Okay, so next we gotta put this all back together. So let's grab the motherboard here. I'm gonna zoom, actually, I do need to keep it zoomed in a bit so we can do the thermal paste real quick. So let's go ahead and grab the thermal paste. And we're gonna have to put some here. So this die is relatively big, so I'm gonna put a big glob dot in the middle. And this stuff will spread pretty thin, so you don't need a crazy amount. Um, that's probably already way more than enough. And we'll just get it all in the center here. Actually, hmm, might need a little bit more. Okay. Just like that. If you put too much, it's not too big of a deal unless you're putting a kind that conducts electricity and can cause problems um, but you want a kind that doesn't this is icy diamond it's a diamond thermal paste um, other people like to use like silver paste and stuff um, but I would think silver conducts electricity too so you want to be careful all right some people use like ceramic based paste those don't have any issues with that um, but other people think to use like What's that liquid metal stuff? You want to be very careful if you're using that. All right, let's go ahead now and do this side. We've got to do kind of like a grain of rice kind of thing. But because this die is so long, we kind of have to spread it kind of far. Okay, so like this. And try and spread 
out a bit, maybe a little more. I'm actually putting more than I need to here. All right, so you wanna try and center this. And when you put the heat sink on, it's just gonna flatten it all and spread it all really, really thin. So um, yeah, you don't need to get it super, super um, spread out on everything. Like sometimes people will flatten everything out. That's not necessary. Um, and actually you can create some air pockets in there, which will make it cool a little bit less efficiently. So I like to do it like this, put like a thing like that. When you push it, all the air bubbles will be pushed out to the sides. All right, same thing with this. I put a dot, it'll push and all the air will go out to the sides. If you're not sure and you wanna kind of like cover everything, you can kind of smear it flat and then put a dot in the center and then that way it will smush that dot and hopefully push the air bubbles out, but this works usually better. All right, let's zoom out. Um, okay, usually I found though that it does like very minute differences. So if you want to just do it the other ways, go ahead and do that, but this is what I like to do. Okay, next we got the heat sink we gotta put back. You do wanna make sure that the fan connectors do end up back on the right spots because if you put it down like this, the fans are gonna be trapped between the heat sink and the, um, uh, the heat sink and the, what do you call it, <laughs> the motherboard? Sorry, my brain's going crazy. All right, so we're gonna hold the fan connectors out of the way to the sides here, like this, and then we're gonna slowly lower this down um, try and find the screw mount points to line it up, okay, and then lower it further. And you want to be careful because if once you drop it, it's going to get the paste all over everything. So you want to try and make sure it's lined up when you drop this down. Okay, so I'm trying to align it on the last two, nine, and ten here, but uh, it's moving all over the place, so this is kind of tricky. All right, so there we go. It's slightly hovering actually above. Okay, we're gonna get screw number one here and we're gonna get that in. I like to twist it backwards, here it click, there, and then one, two, three. Screw number two, same thing, get this over here. One, two, three, okay, screw number three. Click, one, two, three, screw number four. Click, one, two, three, screw number five over here. Click, one, two, three. Screw number six over here. Click, one, two, three. Screw number seven down here. Click, one, two, three. Screw number eight over here. Click, one, two, three. Screw number nine, All right, over here. Click, one, two, three. Screw number 10 over here. Click one, two, three. Then after I do that, I'm gonna lift this, make sure the um, fan screw, uh, cables are up and out of the way. Good, they look good. All right, now we can go ahead and start tightening these all the way. So I'm gonna go again here. One, two, three, over here. One, two, three, uh, over here. One, two, three, here. One, two, three, here. <clears throat> One, two, three, over here. Two, three, over here. One, two, three, here. One, two, three, here. One, two, three, here. One, two, three. Then we're gonna tighten these all the way. One, two, okay. Tighten it all the way down. Here, tighten that all the way down. Tighten that all the way down. Tighten that all the way down. This one, okay, this one. This one, this one, this one, and this one. There we go. All right, so we got all the screws tightened in. There's a little dust here. Let's clean that up. Okay, so we got all of that in. Let's go ahead and flip this back over carefully. Let's make sure we can go ahead and plug the fan connectors back in. If you're wondering, uh, if you replace the fans, make sure you can see they have the metal um, connectors exposed on this one. Don't plug it in upside down, okay? When you use the original fans, they have a little white dot that shows you, okay? 
pinch that into place. All right, this one, same thing. Line it up and pinch that into place. Okay, we got that in. Next, we'll take the whole keyboard, screen, everything assembly. Grab the whole motherboard. Get this back over here. Let's zoom out. All right, again, the tricky part, make sure these cables end up back on top. So these, you wanna kind of hold them out of the way. Gonna carefully go this way. Uh, make sure the battery cable and the keyboard and touchpad cables are all up out of the way when you drop this down. Okay, carefully lower it. I'm lowering it on this side first. And then we gotta get to the power button on this side. Be very careful. I almost grabbed this board, but you wanna be careful not to grab that side. Okay, because again, this has the really thin cable. So we're gonna have to use something to help pull this cable through. I'm just gonna use this and you can lift the board up or you can kind of lift it higher, get underneath, help drop it under. Oh, I might have to use this tool because my finger is too wide. So use that, push that up and then drop that in. All right, there we go. Drop it down, make sure everything is lined up. You can tell because it has these little metal pegs that stick up. Okay, the only thing now, make sure all the cables that you need are on top, not going underneath the motherboard. And then we gotta just reassemble everything, okay? So first thing, keyboard connector here. Make sure this goes back in. I like to kind of, let me see if I can zoom in here. I like to pull back on this at the very tip using my fingernail. And then you can kind of get that to line up and get in there, all right? And once that's in, slide the latch down, flip with your finger, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get this connector back in. Just line that up, okay? Be very careful that you don't smush it down when it's not aligned properly, you can damage stuff. Okay, tighten that in. Get the second screw and tighten that in. Okay, touchpad, trackpad connector. Make sure this latch is up. Pull that down and get that in. It's very sad that it, they didn't make removable RAM on here, but as you can see how complicated, how compact everything is here, they technically don't really have room to put um, removable RAM, and that's why I think they did it that way. Um, but I really hate when they force you to like be stuck with the RAM they choose. So yeah, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and continue reassembling. So. What else do we have here? We have that plastic bracket that goes on top here. So let's go ahead and put that. So this plastic bracket. Okay. I don't think this bracket goes on top of anything, right? It all goes, yeah, underneath. So we'll get that in. Gonna loosely fit the screw first, and then we'll go ahead and tighten everything else down after. Like this. Okay. There we go. Tighten it all down. There we go. We're going to do the battery last. All right. What else? We got the power button over here. Okay. Make sure that latches up. Get the power button in and latch it down. All right. Let's go ahead and start putting these screws. We have this screw here first. Can I even see everything? Let's zoom out. All right, we'll get the screw in first. Okay, then we have this screw in this bottom corner here. Okay, then we got this screw over here. All right, oh, I think my customer's here. All right, we got this screw here. We got this screw slightly higher up here. Okay, we got the three screws at the back here. The customer didn't give me their charger, so I'm not 100% sure it's going to even power on after this. I didn't see a dedicated CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, so I'm pretty sure it's using the main battery as the BIOS battery. Okay, 
right? We've got another screw over here. And we got one more over here. And then we had the one that was down here holding the charge port thing in place that we didn't take out. All right, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and get all these other connectors back in. It's gonna be hard to do it upside down like this. So actually let's get the SSD in first. So take that back down, SSD goes in, just line it up, go slightly at an angle and push that in. Good, get that screw in. Okay, wireless antennas, let's go ahead and get those can be a little bit tricky. Um, usually what I do, let's see here, make sure that it wraps around uh, underneath here. Okay, hopefully it's going the right way. So it actually goes under and follows this tra track here. So make sure it follows that track. Sorry, I know it's going out of view, but make sure it follows that track there. Okay, now we're gonna carefully get these lined up. The way you get it lined up is, or the way I do it, is I put it on top. You can see now it kind of latched on. Then I know it's in the right spot and click it down. Same thing with the other one here. Line it up. Just let, wait till it, make sure it latches and then click it down. Okay, just like that. Make sure they're out of the way of this screw mount. You can stick down the tape there. Oops, let's zoom out. Stick down the tape there and there. And we'll get this little metal bracket thing. And put that on top. Okay, I like to twist it backwards again to hear it click before I tighten it down. Then we'll just tighten that into place. Good. All right, so these cables are gonna be a little tricky. Well, this one's okay. The other one's a little tricky. All right, so the DC jack charge port connector, put that over and then pinch that in. Okay, you can stick that all back down. Now, this one I'm gonna flip this way so it's easier for me. I don't know if I can get it in camera. Oh, yeah, we can, okay. So make sure this latches up, okay. Make sure the cable is wrapping around all the way and going into there. Line this up. Make sure it's lined up completely before you pull on it. And then I use the bottom of the metal latch to pull. And then you should be able to latch that over. And there we go. Then stick that down. Then we've got this. Okay, make sure this lines up. This is probably for the microphones and camera. All right, and line that up and pull that in. Right. I pull on the plastic part of the connector, not the cabling. All right, there we go. Uh, I think we got everything in. Now we just gotta get the back Tron lighting bar back on. So let's zoom out here. Okay. Get this, line that up, carefully pull that on. Make sure it's good. Make sure those two screw holes line up. Put those two screws back in. Okay, hopefully we didn't miss anything. I think everything looks good. Get that screw in, get this screw in. Okay, Tron lighting thing, get that lined up. And then same thing, pinch the two pieces together. Good, all right, go ahead and stick that back down. Looks good. All right, all that we got left is to put the bottom cover on and we're good to go. Oh yeah, don't forget the battery connector, obviously. Otherwise, it's not gonna turn on without the battery. I mean, without the charger. So get that lined up and then pinch that in. Okay, there we go. And then get the bottom cover on. And that's pretty much it. So this slides in this way. So make sure you slide that in under there first. You should be able to kind of pull up and you can see it like catches. So that's how you know you're doing it right. And then lower this down and get all the screws back in. 
And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, again, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Even if you're just saying random stuff, um, yeah, just, just write whatever on the other videos like say hi or whatever or I saw your other videos or I'm here to help out your channel, help your channel grow, whatever. And yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. You're welcome to stay as I get the rest of these screws in. Um, I'll see if it turns on without the charger. I don't have this Alienware charger, so I won't be able to power it on if it doesn't. Oh, one other thing I forgot. We want to put back that plastic sheet. The plastic sheet isn't really necessary, but let's go ahead and put it back because it was in there to begin with. So sorry, I skipped over that part. Let's go ahead and get that thing back in there. Sorry about that. Somebody was probably like, you forgot the plastic sheet. Put the plastic sheet back in. Yeah, so let's go ahead and grab that and put that back in. Okay. I almost got all the screws back in and before I remembered. Okay, so let's go lift that back up. Go around the edges to pop the thing in. Here we go. And get this little thing back on. All right, so again lines up around the plastic thing and then you can see all these connectors. This is how it's supposed to be. So I don't know if somebody opened this before um, and this has to go underneath these little thingies. So actually let's peel it up and slide it under there first and then get this lined up, okay? Just like that. There we go. Now we'll slide this back in, doing it right. Get that all latched back down, okay? And yeah, now we get back all the screws. <laughs> Sorry for missing that part. Okay, get this back in, get that back in. And we'll get all these screws back on. Okay, this one, this one. Put the one down here. I don't even know if they had battery life left when they brought it, so um, yeah, we'll see. All right, if I get this one and the last one here, and that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching. Let's go ahead and see if it'll power on, and we're good to go. Again, I don't know if it will power on because they didn't bring the charger, but let's see. Yeah, oh, okay, I saw it flash. So I think it's doing a BIOS reset, like it's rebooting with the BIOS um, resetting. So I do see the keyboard's rainbowy. I don't know if you can see that in camera because it's too bright, there you go. Uh, we'll just wait a bit, and there you go, Alienware. So you can see the real-time clock was reset, so that means the battery does have the CMOS BIOS battery into it inside it. We'll continue and basically you just need to reset the date and time. And that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching. You can see the Tron lights are working on the back, so we didn't damage that. And we're good to go. All right. Let's drop this. See you all in the next one. Bye.